Okay, we'll go ahead and get started. So, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending where you are dialing in from, and welcome to today's webinar uh, on multi-brand global double-click architecture and really focusing on automating the DCM double-click campaign manager setup uh, for your enterprise. So, um, a few housekeeping items before we kick off. Hopefully, the audio sounds okay and you can see the screen that we're sharing here, the first starter slide. Um, if there's any issues uh, throughout the webinar or questions, comments, concerns, uh, feel free to post in the chat panel and questions panel. I'll be monitoring those as we go through, uh, so you can feel free to interrupt or save them for the end. Hopefully we'll have some time, as I suspect this webinar will take about 45 to 50 minutes uh, to go through. Um, and uh, yeah, it'll be recorded. It's recording right now, uploaded to our website uh, for later on. And feel free to check out our website for more content and information uh, around these topics as well. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is Amin Shaki. I am the head of growth uh, at InfoTrust. Uh, InfoTrust is a web analytics consulting and product development company. Uh, we're headquartered in Cincinnati, USA, but we have offices in Dubai and the Middle East as well as not listed here in uh, Barcelona, Spain, and various team members scattered uh, throughout the US and the world. Uh, we work with some of the largest multi-brand CPG um, complex enterprises and organizations around uh, their Google Analytics 360 suite uh, or marketing platform stack. Uh, we are certified, myself, I'm certified across all the Google products and DoubleClick uh, products, and as a company, we're certified with uh, Google Analytics 360, Tag Manager, Optimize, DoubleClick, um, Data Studio, uh, Attribution 360, et cetera. Um, we are certified marketing partners, and we do these types of webinars, training uh, seminars, uh, and work with these complex multi-brand, multi-site organizations on a daily basis. So hoping that today will give you some insights on just how to approach uh, DoubleClick architecture, and particularly around automation. Uh, because with enterprises that are multi-brand, multiple sites, lots of platforms, uh, it can be extremely time-consuming and complex to set up an architecture that works across all. Um, so we're going to talk through how we've approached this in, in various different ways um, and some of the way uh, outcomes that our clients have been able to achieve uh, from some of the automation practices. Uh, as far as the agenda for today, we're going to First, just talk about the importance of tagging architecture and really some of the uh, options for architecture around DoubleClick, specifically Campaign Manager and uh, Floodlight. A little bit more intro, so if you're already using DoubleClick for your organization across your brands, uh, hopefully some of these scenarios will look familiar. If you're looking to re-architect or deploy new, um, hopefully this will give you some ideas on the, the structures that are possible. Um, then we're going to talk about how we streamline the process with automation. Um, of course, signing up for DoubleClick and or GA360 uh, is a heavy investment on any organization. So getting those uh, out um, rolled out across your organization, streamlined, um, it's really, really key so you can show value. Um, it, there is a process, but uh, hopefully we'll show you some of the tips and tricks that we've used to scale this out uh, in a timely fashion and get that return quicker. We're gonna talk about some of the capabilities once you have double click rolled out with audience building and also sharing across the different Google platforms. And then of course, something we stress on almost all of our webinars and content is uh, maintaining that data governance. Uh, so having quality data and, and that integrity uh, maintained throughout since oftentimes with the deployment of any kind of architecture analytics, media platform, et cetera. Um, there's a lot of investment financially and time and resources to deploy. So making sure that's sustainable long-term is really, really key uh, to get that return. So we're gonna talk about some ways to make sure you have a solid data governance monitoring process in place as well, and the solutions that our uh, multi-brand enterprises have uh, used. Great, so let's first talk about the importance of tagging and really just standards. So this webinar is all about multi-brand enterprises with lots of platforms or lots of markets that they have to um, set up an architecture for. We wanna talk about 
the, the value of centralization, if that's an approach you're looking to, to take, or at least consistency with deployment and, and maintaining standards across all. So not only will measurement and analysis be much more efficient and apples to apples as you begin to look cross-site, cross-platform, market brand, what have you, uh, but also it can make your organization move tremendously faster through knowledge sharing and, and a common set of um, insights or trainings and things that you can be doing to really leverage the data and be more data driven. Um, if it was every market brand site owner doing their own uh, architecture or setup, then it'd be really difficult to make sure the organization as a whole is maturing with their processes and um, leveraging that data for, for decisions. Uh, also, you can see tremendous cost savings. So uh, again, with multi-brand organizations, each brand doing their own thing, having their own media plans, agencies, platforms, uh, the cost can really add up where centralizing and uh, not only the deployment or architecture, but the ownership of these different platforms can uh, have some tremendous cost savings as well with the platform providers. In this case, Google for DoubleClick and the analytics tools. Um, by Coming into this architecture, thinking about standards and consistency, the time to insights activation will be tremendously uh, improved and your business will uh, see the benefits. So uh, we've had a few webinars in the past and tons of content on our website around DoubleClick, the value, the platforms, what they mean, how they work together. Uh, so I wanted to just quickly summarize kind of the DoubleClick Google stack. This slide is uh, data, obviously, with the marketing platform released very recently, but the concept and the functionality of each platform is still the same, where you have, within DoubleClick, you have Campaign Manager, Studio, Bid Manager, Search, uh, Publishers on, on the publishing side, uh, and then you have the measurement uh, solutions as well. Uh, today, we're going to talk mainly about Campaign Manager, since that's kind of the core measurement across all the DoubleClick platforms, and uh, where the integration happens with other tools as well. Um, because that is where uh, the setup needs to occur first for tracking and measurement, which is really the focus within DoubleClick. Um, as you get started, there's a few questions uh, and, and more, of course, as you start to do your audit on what is the best architecture that we should do and how do we want to automate DoubleClick? Um, you might have already gotten to a point with uh, your organization where you know the setup that you need to roll out, you just need to roll it out, scale it, and, and do the automation. We'll get into that in the next section. But if you're just getting started or looking to maybe re-architect or at least audit what you have now, is it the best approach? Does it still fulfill our business needs? Here are a few questions that you can start to ask to gauge what is uh, the way we want to set up our double-click uh, platforms. So. How many business units, brands do you have? Do you look at attribution across them or is it individual units that are completely isolated or separate uh, lines of, of your business? Um, how many agencies, teams are you working with uh, or is your client working with? Um, multiple sites, multinational, et cetera. So these are good questions to start with. And what we always do with our clients is begin with that audit assessment upfront to really understand the landscape, understand the business, the organization, how the structure is set up uh, within the corporation um, so that we understand how decisions are made that would influence the architecture. Um, if decisions are made at the brand level, then the brands need all of the access. But if there is some decisions or measurement KPI review across brands, across regions, markets, what have you, that would have some implications into the architecture you decide. Um, now with the double click, Landscape. This slide is a little dated as well, but the concept is still the same with you know the various platforms, how they integrate together. I wanted to just show this briefly to show you um, all, all the ways the different tools are, are connected together, and this will only get tighter uh, as Google's bringing in their advertising solutions and analytics measurement solutions together. These integrations will only merge even more, um, but you'll see that DoubleClick Campaign Manager you know, bulk of the connections come through or, or have an impact with DoubleClick Campaign Manager. Um, and for the foreseeable future, Campaign Manager will remain. It might, um, you know, merge closer with Search and Bid Manager, but um, these platforms and the integrations, data flow, audience sharing will still be intact um, across the entire ecosystem. 
but this is just the landscape to show you that campaign manager is where floodlights or tracking is set up across the websites or the platforms users are coming to. Uh, ultimately, where you can do reporting, attribution, um, audience sharing across the different platforms, including um, you know with search, bid manager, etc. Um, and one thing we will talk about in the next section as far as automation is the API. So double click. Uh, and really all the Google products, including analytics, has a strong API that can be leveraged to scale out setup configurations or update, modify, uh, and make you know, standards rolled out across your business. So we use the API a lot to automate uh, Google Analytics 360 setup, uh, like properties, accounts, views, user access, all the configurations like dimensions, GTM, and now also with double click, and that's what we'll talk about here. Um, now with double click, uh, the three ma uh, main platforms, campaign manager, bid manager, search, um, it, it can be complex the way the setups uh, work. This is just a very quick snapshot. I'm not gonna talk through it uh, in detail, but just to show the complexity that can arise from having uh, the structure um, without a proper audit or understanding of the various options that you can do. But essentially, the, the key here is that within Campaign Manager, there's an advertiser uh, set up within your network. The network is basically your Campaign Manager account. Uh, it's the shell that holds all of the configuration or all the settings, such as the advertiser, which is where uh, the tracking will be set up via the floodlight configurations, and we'll talk a little bit more about that, and the connections to the other platforms like uh, the double-click bid manager, programmatic uh, platform uh, for for display and video, as well as double-click search, uh, your search aggregator tool to help you run on AdWords, Bing, and other platforms as well. Um, I mentioned double-click, uh, sorry, Floodlight, and we had a separate webinar previously that really dove deep into being data-driven with double-click, aka how to really fully leverage Floodlights. Um, but I wanted to do a quick reminder here since it's kind of key to understand in order to build your architecture and scale out across your business. Um, what Floodlight is, is essentially the conversion tracking tag for all DoubleClick platforms. Uh, it's centralized within DoubleClick Campaign Manager, but can be used uh, to track bid manager, search, DoubleClick search uh, campaigns themselves. And really it's used to stitch the ad interactions like impressions or clicks, with the on-site visits, conversions like purchases, signups, uh, add to cart, you know, whatever those key actions or activities are on your platforms, the double click floodlight tag will, will capture those and tie them back to the ad interactions uh, prior to the site visit. Uh, the way this works is via cookie for browsers, device ID for apps, uh, the link happens on the Google server side, and it's really the core for reporting all of those key metrics that is uh, used in your analysis, as well as in your attribution or audience building uh, capabilities within those tools. So understanding that floodlight um, tracking is core uh, for all DoubleClick platforms, and that lives within advertisers, within DoubleClick Campaign Manager, this is when you can start to decide, okay, how should we actually set up our floodlight tracking configurations um, and the advertisers? Uh, within the network or accounts that we have. Um, and in the most simplest form, there's two ways that you can set up floodlight configurations or advertisers uh, where your tracking will live, uh, either as independent advertisers or shared advertisers, which has a parent-child relationship. Basically, two levels of, of the advertiser. Kind of depends on the organization structure that you have. And we'll go through a few scenarios uh, and how you can start to assess what is the best architecture, really at a high level, but to give you some of those introductory uh, questions and audit that you will need to go through. So a shared or parent-child advertiser relationship uh, looks like this, where the floodlight configuration will always occur at the parent advertiser level, or if there's individual advertisers, um, uh, which, in the first case here, the independent advertisers, the floodlight configuration where the tracking is actually set up, the activities, actions, variables that you want to see on site or on your app, um, that floodlight configuration 
lives within the DCM advertiser itself, where also your campaigns are constructed and where uh, you'll have a lot of your, your media planning actually built in. Um, where a parent-child advertiser relationship, you'll have the floodlight configuration or tracking activities, variables uh, set up at the parent advertiser. So all the tracking lives at this level, but then you can split up the advertiser by different business lines in this case, um, so that you can track um, conversions across all, uh, but still roll it up at the corporation level. Where the independent advertisers, you might want to capture conversions individually for each line of business. So Julie's cars versus Julie's bikes in this case, they'll have conversions separated because they might be totally separate business lines. The teams don't interact. Attribution overlap is not key. But if you want to see at the corporation level within DoubleClick, the total amount of conversions, impressions, clicks, costs, what have you, but still manage campaigns separately uh, because each business is slightly different. You can do that here by splitting the uh, actual advertisers up within children and linking up to the parent where all the tracking will actually live. Um, this slide just goes a little bit deeper into the uh, parent-child relationship and uh, you know some of the things that I was talking about in the previous slide. Uh, as well as how the linking works. So um, mentioned that the parent advertiser controls all the floodlights, but also audiences um, and DBM, uh, DS, as well as Google Analytics, they're always linked uh, to the floodlight configuration or parent advertiser if it's a shared configuration. Really wherever the tracking is set up or the floodlight activities, that's where the other platforms are linked to. Um, each child advertiser will share the floodlight and audience configurations as the parent, so they inherit any of the settings configuration at that level down to the children level. Um, and then conversions will be deduped if you have users that are interacting across multiple children advertisers, aka campaigns across the different um, uh, individual setups, it'll be deduped at the conversion level at the parent as well. Okay, let's go walk through a few scenarios and some of the questions you can ask to decide the setup that you should have. Um, so, Dino World. Some of you may have seen these examples if you're working with Google, since Google um, has historically been the main provider of DoubleClick, now there's some reseller partners, but they would go through some of this exercise here and potentially show you this example, where Dino World's a fake corporation uh, that has three business units all under the same Dino World brand, um, but the business units are totally isolated. They don't um, need to see cross business line, business unit attribution. Uh, it's all in-house, so there's uh, not different agencies or complexities there, um, and it's only one website per line of business. So in this case, the most simple setup potentially could be just one advertiser per line of business because they're so isolated, because there's no overlap in attribution. However, you can still have campaigns that target different mediums or different channels uh, within your advertiser setup. So that's kind of the, the most basic scenario. Uh, to build on that, uh, let's say that still each business unit works independently, but there are different teams or agencies that uh, own different channels. Maybe you have an agency for uh, PPC versus display, search agency versus a uh, display agency. This is sort of common from what we've seen with some multi-brand uh, enterprises. Sometimes it's consolidated to just one, but sometimes it's split up among others. So in this case, you can have uh, the parent-child shared configuration where you have the parent advertiser, floodlight tracking configuration at each business unit level so that conversions are deduped. Attribution can work at each business line level, but different advertisers, child advertisers for each agency, so they can fully manage their campaigns, creatives, everything just for what they man or what they own um, or what they're actually uh, running themselves. So there uh, can be a split here with user permission, so no agency sees the information about the other, the campaigns, the spend, things like that, uh, but still at the customer level, they can look at the conversions uh, holistically. So that's scenario two, adding a little bit more complexity. Um, scenario three, just to add a little bit more differentiating uh, information here, if attribution across the business units is desired, 
uh, that is the goal. There's a central team that manages across all the different units. However, there's still a different um, campaign media team and potential agency per channel or line of business. This could be the setup here where you still have the parent advertiser that collects conversions and the floodlight activities are tracked across all of the different lines of business. So you can see attribution and build audiences cross brand or cross uh, platform. But then you still have the child advertiser individually split by different agencies or teams for what they manage, uh, the different campaigns uh, or, or mediums that they might be working through. So each channel line of business could have its own child advertiser split uh, with that central parent advertiser uh, that collects all the conversions and all the data uh, holistically for attribution and audience building. Uh, the last scenario that we're going to go through, even though there are more as you get to even further detail like multinational, um, is if there's more than 1 million conversion paths per month expected, uh, because that is uh, a limitation with the advertisers. Um, so this is potentially a little less likely, but there are ways you can set up the advertiser uh, and floodlight configuration per uh, uh, business unit. Um, but also have a second advertiser specifically for remarketing pixels, audience building, and um, you know different use case there. So this gets a little bit more unique and custom per business, depending on uh, your volume of traffic and, and your customer engagement. Uh, but know that there are there's a lot of different scenarios that we can configure uh, the advertising uh, setup for that. Um, to wrap out kind of that section, just as far as thinking about what the architecture, uh, which architecture makes sense for your business, um, in any case, when you set up a, a parent advertiser or if it's just a single uh, individual advertiser, you will need to set up floodlight activities, which are essentially what you want to track. These are the tracking tags or actions users can take on site that you want to count as conversions. Um, and typically, what we recommend what Google recommends, what's in industry best practices, think about your consumer journey or your funnel that you want to see actions along the way um, and track accordingly to that. So when you set up your floodlight, really with double click, you can see the progression of consumers along the, uh, this path here, uh, but to think about floodlight activities in the same way. So maybe you'll have one floodlight activity or, or tracking tag or conversion tied to just a visit on the site. So as long as they land on the site, we track that as a one conversion. But then if they make it to a PDP page, that's another floodlight activity, another conversion, another tracking tag that we'll want to set up. If they then click add to cart uh, or go to checkout or ultimately purchase, if this is e-commerce, or if they sign up for an account or whatever the key actions are, as most likely there's more than one key action on your digital platform, you can set up a floodlight activity for each of those. Uh, so that you can begin to visualize these reports in double click or data studio um, you know as users go through the entire journey so these are just some example uh, data attributes that fall into these different buckets along the journey okay so all of that was the background about different architectures and scenarios but really when it comes down to when uh, you work to solidify what architecture you think is best for your business how do we actually get this in place? That's often the challenge where it can, you know, depending how many sites you manage, how many brands, markets, business units you're working with, it can be a very daunting, timely task if you have to create all these manually. All the uh, advertisers, parent, children, floodlight activities, tags, tracking, uh, custom variables, et cetera. Um, and again, if you want more detail about what all goes into a floodlight activity or conversion tracking, we have a separate webinar we've done previously. You can check that out on our website. But as far as automation, what we have done with our multi-brand enterprise clients is uh, deploy this single structure once we fully commit to what the structure should be uh, via an automation workflow. And really, it works like this. These are the high-level steps. First, we audit the existing structure, or if there is no structure, as you're just starting to deploy double-click uh, standards, 
is build that architecture. What is the, the structure we want? Which scenario do we want to follow from the previous section? Once we confirm the best architecture based on the business needs, uh, and we solidify this is really key, the nomenclature for the advertisers, the flow light activities, and everything that we want to set up. Um, what also we've done in the past is a client would say, we have double click set up, but we don't know how it's set up. It's a mess. We need to clean it up, change the naming, make it really, really solid, and fit our business needs. So nomenclature and documenting exactly what this looks like first. The planning stages is what uh, step one and two are. Then what we would do uh, is build that mapping file for all the websites, markets, brands, apps, any platform that needs um, the floodlight configuration and advertiser setup, map that out in a, in a file, in a spreadsheet. So what are the namings of the advertiser or the floodlight activities or the custom variables we need? And what are the individual settings that we want to have? Um, even if it's a just basic table, um, doesn't have all the information included, but just the headers and, and the, the basic structure. We need this mapping file to be done first so that we can input that into our automation process that we've created at InfoTrust using the API, which will then execute all the creation or updating and renaming of all the configurations within DoubleClick. So to show you an example, um, this here is the an example spreadsheet uh, that we would have different attributes that we need to know in order to input into our automation script to process and create uh, within DoubleClick. So this information for most of our clients is readily uh, available. Uh, so like list of websites that will have DoubleClick floodlights applied to them. Um, maybe the brands or markets or business units that we need to include in the naming of the advertiser. Um, and then just a basic list of the activities we want to track. So if it is a visit to the homepage, if it's a add to cart action, checkout and purchase, let's just say four floodlight activities, maybe user ID, uh, product name, product revenue as a few custom variables. Having that list of all the floodlight activities that need to be applied to all the advertisers mapped out, then we can actually input that into our automation process so that it can be run with the API, created automatically, and the output could look something similar to this. So in this case, um, we took the spreadsheet, the mapping file with all the details and required information, and put it into our automation uh, tool, and it spit out, this is just an example uh, advertiser or, or network that we built. Uh, it would spit out all of your advertisers, even the child-parent relationships here, automatically. So instead of manually creating one by one, ensuring no errors in spelling or anything like that, takes it straight from the file, outputs it here into double click directly, as well as the floodlight configuration activities, all of the settings in a very uniform standard way. What we can do on top of this is that if double click campaign manager is already configured, we can run an audit using the same API process where we would get uh, essentially a download of all the settings, what's similar, what's different, and then output, again, automatically with the API, what we need to improve. So to get to full consistency and following standards, these 10 advertisers need to be updated. Um, in this case I'm showing here, this is a fresh, clean, new setup following this particular um, nomenclature and list of activities that I had to block out a few that were too client specific. Uh, but you can see some are pretty standard, pretty basic, uh, that can be rolled out with the API. So uh, the time savings that we estimated uh, when working with different partners for a company that has over, I think, 2,000 to 3,000 websites, um, each with a need to have a child advertiser within a market level parent advertiser, and what is this, about seven or eight all activities, about 10 custom variables. The time that they were uh, estimating were, you know, almost a month to create all of that manually. Now we can do it in just a couple of days through a uh, quick automation process. Yes, the time to create the Spreadsheet of uh, details and requirements uh, can take you know potentially a couple of days as well just to gather information. But the process of going through each and every advertiser creation or floodlight activity that's saved completely through our automation process with the API. 
Um, now, creating the advertisers in DoubleClick and the floodlight activities is only half the battle. <laughs> um, you can create all of them in DCM, but then you actually need to apply them to your website or to your digital platforms, your apps, uh, to actually get the tracking set up for those sessions and user interactions. Um, this is where we highly recommend using a tag management system. Um, for most organizations today, this is already in place. However, we still see clients uh, and enterprises that don't have full rollout of tag management systems. Um, so uh, I won't go into the details of what tag management system is to be conscious of time, but uh, it's extremely valuable. And especially when using Google Tag Manager, there is pre-built integrations um, between DoubleClick and Google Tag Manager. However, those are also pretty manual um, as you need to go through each advertiser to sync or send or push the tags from DoubleClick to GTM, where if you're working with multiple brands, thousands of sites, you will also need to automate this. And again, this is where the API comes in handy. Now for GTM. So once you have the DoubleClick floodlight configuration advertiser set up complete, automated, and ready to go, then you can take that configuration, apply it, what we've done is apply it to a GTM automation workflow to actually create the tags, triggers, variables within uh, Google Tag Manager, or really whatever tag management system you're using to deploy to your uh, platforms and start tracking. So workflow is very similar, where we would first define the nomenclature, the rules, the number of tags, triggers, variables, things that we need to actually apply within GTM, and then uh, list the changes, automate the rollout, again, with our API automation process and tool. We have uh, scripts and technology that's already built on our side to deploy, and hopefully uh, our engineering team by the end of this year will have a user interface that can be used for this, but right now it's an automated process on the back end. Um, and then regular audits, which we'll get into a little bit later to confirm no changes in DCM were made in the UI or in GTM that can affect this tracking. Depending on your organization, if you have many users with access to these different tools, technologies, they can make changes and modifications that can affect the tracking. So we definitely want an ongoing monitoring process in place to ensure no loss in data or changes that can affect that. Ultimately, the output could look something similar to uh, this in Google Tag Manager, where you'll have, similar to all the double-click floodlight activities I showed in a previous slide, uh, those have been now created as tags with triggers and variables applied uh, within GTM directly. So this is kind of the output of the autom automation within GTM. And I just want to list a few other example automation capabilities within the GTM API, such as creating containers. So if you are not using GTM today, but you want to migrate to it as part of your double-click architecture, we can automate the creation of the containers um, the creation and modification, updating of tags, variables, triggers per a mapping file or just instructions that we input into our system, uh, as well as mass publishing. If there's a simple change or a mass rollout we need to do, we can actually publish the containers as well so they're ready for live production use. Um, the last component of this section is to talk through um, you know, everything we talked about now, as far as the double-click DCM automation setup architecture, the GTM setup architecture uh, as well, um, you know, deploying that on the sites is straightforward, can be streamlined, uh, but really to get the detailed information you might need per your measurement strategy or measurement plan, like custom variables, and to track specific actions like add to cart or purchase with purchase details, it's highly recommended that you also set up a data layer on your website uh, or on your platform. So on websites, this is just a JavaScript object with relevant information uh, or ways to signify a user action so that it can be connected to your tag management system. Uh, this image is kind of taken from a TLM example where you have your platform, you have your data layer that connects or is sitting on your website with all the information you need that powers the tags. Uh, or in this case, the floodlight activities. So if you want to track a purchase as a floodlight activity, uh, and that happens on a thank you page, but you want to make sure you capture revenue, the products that were purchased, quantity, other attributes, uh, you will need Google Tag Manager to be configured to grab that data 
from the site, from the completed order, and the best approach there is the data layer. We have tons of content on our website, infotrust.com, as well as our product site, taginspector.com, that talks about the data layer, best practices, approach, setup, scalability for multi-brand organizations and how to keep standards uh, and consistency as well. Uh, so I'm not gonna go too deep into that. It's just highly, highly recommended for really robust data collection. Okay, let's talk about, uh, you know, once you set up your architecture, streamlined, deployed it, automated it all the way through, let's talk about audience building and sharing across platforms a little bit. Some of the more exciting use cases with a really solid enterprise architecture. So um, really when creating audiences with DoubleClick and Google integrations, some of the things that you can leverage is the Google data. Uh, affinity in market, double click cookie based data, along with your user interactions. So, things that you might be tracking, let's say within Google Analytics or within your floodlight activities. Some I mentioned before, like add to cart, sign up, complete a purchase, or getting to checkout, et cetera. You can merge all of those attributes, information together, and uh, build audiences to retarget via double click bid manager or AdWords uh, on the search side. But you can also target similar audiences who may have never visited your site, but are similar in characteristics to audience groups that you create. So if you create a group of your top performers or your top purchasers or you know register, registered users, what have you, you can also target similar audiences that have never been to your site that have characteristics that could lead them to be uh, a top converter as well. We'll talk about that here in a second. A quick screenshot of just how the audiences can be passed between all the different platforms and products, um, where you have double-click campaign manager on one side, tracking data with the floodlight activities, and if you're using Google Analytics 360, uh, how those platforms can integrate together as well. Of course, double-click search, DBM, AdWords, that's where your media actually is deployed, so that's where the audiences would be leveraged, where they might be built in DCM or GA360, They'll actually be used or targeted uh, within the media channels themselves. So this quick flow shows you how data can be passed be, uh, between all the systems and how audience sharing uh, can work. One fun fact about uh, audience building is that there is also an API, at least within GA360, to automate mass creation of audiences. So again, if your enterprise has a standardized set of floodlight activities, custom variables, Google Analytics events, properties, what have you, you can also define a set of audiences that you know all of your sites will potentially wanna target and mass create those. Instead of individually site by site, property by property, what have you, you can automate creating audiences uh, globally as well. Um, quick reference slide on just all of the attributes that can be used with audiences. Uh, or, or within audiences, such as some user characteristics, behavioral or interaction type of data, as well as channel touch points, particularly when you connect Google Analytics 360 and double-click platforms together, if you are using the entire marketing platform. Um, these are just some of the attributes you can use. And we have a lot more content that's deeper dive into the integration capabilities and details uh, that you can reference on our blog that we recently deployed as well. So I'm not gonna go through in detail, this is just a reference of you know, a snapshot of all the attributes that can be used. There's many, many more example attributes um, that can be leveraged for audience targeting as well. So I mentioned similar audiences a little bit before, but I wanted to uh, share a, a bit more detail into what this actually is. Um, with similar audiences, you can re reach new customers or new potential users, uh, targeting first party data um, and, and audiences that you build or characteristics they use with your data to see other people that have not been to your site or are not familiar with your brand that might have similar characteristics. So this is really useful if you're trying to scale and get more reach with um, the people you're targeting. And instead of a wider or more traditional targeting method, these are actually tied to uh, characteristics and information that you're tracking about your own users. Um, this is algorithm-based uh, so it might take some time to actually tackle um, new audiences, and it's not recommended for new campaigns. So once you have 
some data tracking for a little while, you have some audiences that you've developed that are high value and you wanna reach lookalikes or others, uh, other cookies and, and users across the web, um, this is how uh, that can be done with similar audiences. So it's a really powerful capability um, that should be leveraged, especially for enterprises with a really solid architecture in place. Uh, quick example of just a um, audience building in GA360. Um, if you are using GA360, connecting it to double click, you can build audiences here and define the logic and scope with all of the settings and, and uh, dimensions and metrics that are available to you within GA360. Um, I think I talked a little bit about audience development, but as I mentioned before, it can be automated as well. Uh, and this is just the workflow that we've suggested to some of our clients in the past. You'll notice it's a very similar methodology here where we audit existing setup, if there is any across all the platforms using audiences, provide recommendations on which audiences make the most sense based on um, what's set up today, what's working, business needs, business goals, and then feedback from the different business units, markets, brands, what have you. Um, once you have that feedback and recommendations, you can build a single set of audiences, again, in potentially a mapping file. Um, so you know every uh, double-click instance and every Google Analytics property should have this set of audiences created. Once that's in there, plug it into the automation tool and it will create it uh, immediately, as well as share it with your DVM or AdWords platforms, uh, particularly from GA360, as those are um, you know, where your audiences are acti actually activated um, for your campaigns. Uh, ultimately, I, I like to share this um, visual here to show how some of the tools interact together. Uh, there's lots of visuals on how the data flows and how everything can be uh, built out, but this is just one to show you know, search, um, and campaign manager, bid manager, how tracking actually works there. Um, all the data comes in together. You can even integrate your backend data with DoubleClick or GA with their importing processes and measurement protocol. And then that's how you can customize, remarket, target different audiences accordingly as well. Okay, just to be conscious of time, we have about five, 10 more minutes uh, before I hold off for questions. We're on the last uh, section here about ongoing data governance monitoring. It's uh, the last section, but certainly one of the most important ones because, um, you know, like I mentioned before, all the work to go into assessing what's the right architecture, deploying it, automating it, getting it in place, doing trainings, what have you, it all falls apart if there's no ongoing governance, ongoing monitoring and checking to ensure that um, nothing affects the data collection. So I'm gonna walk through a couple of practices and uh, technologies and tools that we use to keep this process in place. So uh, if you're looking to um, convince uh, your stakeholders why an ongoing monitoring or data governance uh, process is critical, here's just some use cases. Um, you know, it's without heavy time and resources invested in testing, uh, it's hard to maintain accuracy and integrity of data, particularly as your platforms evolve. Uh, most organizations go through uh, cycles where they update their website, deploy new tracking, lots of things can happen. New regulations can be rolled out that affect how you set up your tracking, deployed in Tag Manager or DoubleClick or what have you. So constant monitoring, updating, and validation of the data collection is, is required. Um, and oftentimes with the platforms themselves like DoubleClick or Google Analytics, the alerting capabilities are, are there but not as robust. They don't pinpoint at the point of collection where the issue is. Um, they might just show a drop in particular metric or KPI. It doesn't say if it was a natural drop just from your users being less engaged or if it's a tracking issue, something broken. Um, where platforms that we've used and that actually InfoTrust owns like taginspector.com, we can simplify the validation for both floodlight deployment and Google Analytics or just any tracking any tag deployment on your site um, with or without a tag management system, our technology can automatically validate and scan, monitor all sites um, to ensure the tracking is in place at the key actions or pages that you're looking to, to capture with your measurement. Um, so 
We can also cross-check specific campaigns, landing pages, make sure the configuration is still intact in place. And because it's really our focus is scalability, uh, the platform and technology that I'm uh, showing here is designed to do cross-site, cross-brand, cross-market. Um, so this output here on the right just shows you a quick table that uh, essentially a scan or report that shows all the pages that were reviewed to make sure that the attributes that are expected are actually included uh, for the double-click tagging uh, that we have deployed so that we know that there's no gap in data collection uh, across any different page or missing attributes and variables, et cetera. Um, the output of this is um, there's various different formats, but one of the easiest ways that uh, we found is to build a dashboard within uh, Data Studio. We have a demo account, happy to give anyone a demo separately from here. <clears throat> but basically, <coughs> excuse me, any site or brand would have <clears throat> Tag Inspector set up to validate the data layer or data object that all the tracking lives on, as well as the tag management system. So on any site, you'll have either a data layer, data object, or Google Tag Manager or Tag Management System deployed for floodlight tracking, or a combination of them all. And the way we set up our validations is a rule per individual activity or variable that we want to check, both on-site in the data layer or in the GTM pixel request itself because a error or failure of tracking can happen either with the source code, your developers change something in their data layer configuration, causing the data to stop tracking, or if the data layer is fine, the code is fine from your developers, but something changes in Google Tag Manager or your tag management system, like a trigger or some logic that someone modifies, that can also cause tracking to break. Uh, so we create validation rules and drill downs for each point of failure whether it's source code specific or within the tag management system specifically as well. If there's an issue with the processing of the data, that's on the Google technology side. And that's what most people are already familiar with as far as those alerts. But in the source code validation, in a tag management system validation, making sure there's no points of failure for any tracking, any attribute or activity and trigger, that's where our technology can, can sit and recognize that. So by setting up individual rules, such as the right attributes are tracked on particular hits, or the checkout event, or uh, add to cart event, detail view event fires properly uh, within the data layer or within the actual um, tag management system. We can set up all these rules and then roll up across the organization, cross brand, cross site, cross platform, total number of failures or things that weren't tracked properly, uh, successes, and the rate of failure. Now, of course, we'll see you'll never have 0% rate of failure. There's never perfect tracking in this day and age with uh, JavaScript blocking and sites not rendering for certain users for certain reasons. Uh, but we tend to target less than 5% rate of failure across any individual rule so that we can be confident that the data is collecting at a, at a high um, accuracy. Now, uh, the last thing I wanna note is that this particular demo uh, sorry, the, the logic can be set up to track very specific attributes, individual attributes, individual actions, post login, post thank you page, um, and then broken down by site or market or brand if you want to see that individual breakdown and failures um, uh, you know, accordingly. This screenshot shows uh, how we can set up um, a trend line, if you will, so you can see rates of failure over time. So if you start to notice trends like on every second Wednesday of every month, there's a high failure rate, maybe that coincides with a, um, a sprint, a deployment of your site, or some kind of scanning technology separate from, from your tracking that affects the tracking, causes a lot of failures, your server is down at the same time every month because they're doing some maintenance, who knows? Um, you can begin to see trends with this technology when you have the validation in place just powered by our technology tag inspector. But you'd first need to set up the validation rules, the checks, uh, the, the measurement of the measurement uh, up front so that you can see the rate of failure over time. Uh, and ultimately the goal here is to minimize or eliminate data collection gaps. So with our technology, it works uh, in real time, 
but most of our clients usually check the dashboards and ensure quality tracking on a daily basis um, without or with or without being alerted directly from our system uh, or from uh, the dashboard itself. But ultimately, we want to minimize the data collection gap for DoubleClick, Google Analytics, whatever tool you're using, and uh, Tag Inspector is used for that monitoring. Okay, so to wrap up here, just with a few minutes extra, um, how to get started. Uh, this is just a process guide, some very high-level generic steps to get any project kind of rolled out, kicked off. But I'd encourage you to, uh, if you have questions about what architecture to use or further questions about how we automate, the details behind our automation, the API, what we use, um, or if you're looking for a monitoring data governance practice, uh, some examples, feel free to reach out uh, to me directly. Uh, the, there's my email there on the screen, I mean at infotrustlc.com, or check out our uh, contact us page. But um, that wraps up the webinar content for today. Thanks so much, everyone, for joining. Hope it was valuable. I'll hang around maybe three to five minutes, uh, check out the chat panel or questions panel if anything comes in. Uh, but of course, we hope to see you in future webinars or uh, follow-up calls if you guys are uh, interested in anything any of the solutions we discussed today. So thanks again, I'll hang around, but otherwise have a, a great day or evening depending on uh, where you are. Thank you.